What's up guys? A lot of news came down for the Braves today with the exit interviews. And I thought I'd come on here and give me give you guys my thoughts on everything, the nuts and bolts of the main topics and just thoughts overall. This is the most fine I've been um with a postseason exit given everything that happened this season with injuries and everything, but um, it still stings, uh, especially with the Mets and Phillies doing what they're doing, um, and all three away wild card teams winning, um, and we're not, and we're the only one that didn't. Obviously, uh, the mountain was huge for us. So while while I'm okay with it, it's still hard for me to watch postseason without my team in it, just because. I go through the what if, what if, um, and and the Mets and Phillies, I can't really stand either of them. Um, no disrespect to them, um, but I just as as our rivals, it's really really hard. So um, I will definitely follow it and be paying attention, but it just it just isn't the same. But wanted to come on here and talk um, the nuts and bolts of the exit interviews. Um, Alex Anthopoulos said, one, our payroll will increase. Two, we are expected to pick up the uh, team options for Marcelo Zuna, one year, 16 million. Travis Darno, one year, 8 million. And Aaron Bummer, um, 7.25 million. Really like all of those. Um, I'll be interested to see what we do with Jorge Soler. Two years of control, um, given if Marcelo Zuna's going to be back. Um, and it looks like he's going to be um, with Ronald Acuna Jr.'s injury. How, how we're going to play that, because Alex Anthopoulos did say that um, they will slow play it and be as cautious as they possibly can so that Ronald's in the best place to when he's ready he's fully ready to go after it but <clears throat> um so whether that's to start the season in April June who knows same with Strider and him working back from his injury but it's spe specifically with the outfield uh, situation um, and Ronald if you wanted to give him some time at DH that means Marcelo Zuno would sit and that means Jorge Soler would be in the outfield and we saw some adventures there obviously you can live with it but uh, I don't know that you want to so Soler trade could be possible even a Marcelo Zuno trade could be possible even though I don't think so with the production and what he's meant to the clubhouse the last uh, couple of years, despite his uh, checkered past, as we all know. Um, and I don't think you're going to get a lot uh, in trade for a guy like Ozuna just because of his past. Um, but Jorge Soler, that's more likely. But you also have, well, obviously, Michael Harrison Center. What do you do with Jared Kelnick? He'll... Definitely likely be back, but with Loriano and what he brought to the table this year, he could be some pop against left-handed pitching. He has he's arbitration eligible as well. That's probably the most um, intriguing decision um, outside of the Soler and Ozuna thing because you. As of right now, you've got some good depth, but some also cloudy um, decisions outfield DH. Um, with the Ronald injury, obviously you want Ronald to be a thousand percent before he's fully out there again. Because, you know, um, back two out of three years in ACL, that's not, a, not ideal. So I think we're going to see some creativity there, possibly. Alex Anzopoulos did say the payroll will increase. Um, 
And he did say that uh, starting pitching isn't as big of a priority as it was coming into 2024, which he said that exact same thing with Vaughn Grisham possibly being in left field, and then we struck the Jared Kelnick deal. So I definitely think with the possibility of losing Freed and maybe Charlie Morton retiring, he's definitely going to do something there. Um, Alex Anthopoulos, everything he says always has a purpose, and I think that was definitely there as well. Um, and then um, the entire coaching staff will be back as of now. Obviously, um, a lot of our coaches have had interviews and some have left recently, um, so that could also happen. But I think I realize that everybody wants uh, change and some new philosophies and new voice, but and I understand we didn't walk and we struck out a ton this year and, and that's got to change. But once when you lose a, a stabilizing force at the top of the order like Ronald, because he was struggling, yes, but he was still creating havoc um, and creating um, pressurized innings. They We had too many simple non-competitive innings after Ronald um, went out with injury after it. it just kept piling on and I think we all kind of forget that everyone is human and trying to trying to uh, replace or exceed or match the production of guys like Austin Riley um, Ronald Cooney Jr. Ozzy Michael Harris that's just not that's why they're players on a team it's one player doesn't make a team, um, and we just found that out that it's a that Ronald Acuna Jr. is um, much more than his numbers, much more than the box score. Even the though the box score um, um, stands out big time, but he he does so many other things, creates deeper counts, things of that nature takes the pressure off. So when Snicker says uh, passing the bat or moving the line or whatever he says always, then it's actually um, possible when everybody's putting so much pressure on themselves, including the coaching staff, the kidding staff, the approach kind of, it feels like the approach has kind of gone out the window because you're like, what else could happen? That kind of felt like the the hitting philosophy and and it was maddening no doubt but I think the human aspect I think we all kind of gloss over but the realities are the realities and these guys are your brothers and you go to battle with them every day and watching them drop one after another I don't know how much um you can take um but and I think that's that's my thought on the coaching staff I think Snicker is going to ride into the sunset after this year. I think that that has been kind of said already in some ways. And I feel like we can we can end on some magic there. But with the way Snicker kept us all together um, as a team and, and every different type of situation we could have possibly had and still won 89 games, that's why I think Snicker deserves... Um, to go out the way he wants to go out and the coaching staff. Obviously, if we struggle out the gate offensively, I think there could be a change. But I think um, I think Kevin Seitzer's proven um, great on many a level. So I'm willing to I'm willing to just kind of pass this and see how it starts next year. And obviously, if it starts um, starts out rough, or it's it kind of snowballs again, not injuries, but approach, then we can have a conversation. But obviously, and like I said, that could all change because um, our coaches have been coveted by uh, other organizations as they should be with seven straight um, playoff appearances. So that is my thought on the coaching staff and everything going into that. Um, 
I think it definitely could be interest an interesting off season because you know Alex Anthopoulos loves to jump on things early. Um, so be on the lookout for that. But I I'm really um, excited to see what uh, what 2025 brings and the realities of what 2024 was was a stupid season and annoying and um but there's new horizons also Brian Snicker said that I think um Murphy's gonna catch he wanted Murphy to catch three out of four every single day or every series and with the oblique injury I think that threw him off and I've been a Sean Murphy defender all season long because of that. And I think that we're going to do that again. We're, if Murphy stays healthy, that's what's going to happen. And I feel really confident in a bounce back season for Sean. Um, and I'm just really excited to see how kind of how the chess pieces move. The emergence of Grant Holmes and Spencer Schwellenbach are really really helpful but I think we're definitely going to upgrade the starting rotation uh one way or another um and Orlando Arcia I would like to see an upgrade there for sure just his at bats were kind of disastrous most of the time in 2024 but again 2023 was so magical and and insane record-breaking stuff that it's kind of like a golfer trying to um, come back after a 61. It usually doesn't go as well as you'd like it. Um, and you're trying, you're trying to replicate something that you might not ever see again. And that's that's the bugaboo of of trying to trying to build a consistent winner. And even despite everything, we still made the playoffs. And um, I I'm just really excited and getting started with the options picked up that's nice to see but also it doesn't uh it doesn't guarantee that things aren't going to shake up because i think they definitely are and it's a time of uh transition and funness because we are going to get ronald Acuna jr austin riley and spencer strider back and i think we have, might have two of the best spencers in the league and i would not mind a spencer schwellenbach extension uh the blue box magic uh, i think that's coming down the pike really soon but as always go braves champions forever i think i covered everything um you can get it all here make sure you hit that subscribe button um the like button helps out a lot i'll have everything covered for you guys all off season long cannot wait